So I'm working on a new cord organizer to 3D print. And so I was just modeling up a USB-C cord and it's actually a little tricky here at the base. It's a little bit tricky, you know, having to do a loft to solve this. Now for the cord, this is where it gets really complicated. You can see that I want the cord to come over in an angle, but then drop down vertically and it's not a nice consistent coil it's got a nice flat run here this is a custom sweep meaning i need to do a series of paths to account for this and this is where 3d sketching can be especially helpful so let's run through this model and talk about some of the lessons learned the first thing I want to do is create a new component because I know that I'm going to be making a couple different components in this design. The cord is the thing I'll be managing with another device. That's the thing I'll be kind of working around. So I do need to go ahead and start my first component, uh, maybe even give it a name so that it's easy to know what's happening. We're going to do a new sketch. I like to do the front plane. I uh, try to keep things centered as, as often as possible. I'm going to go to the center rectangle and start at the origin and just sketch a rough shape here. And it's 8.22 roughly by 2.4 millimeters. This is the first extrusion. It's going to be 7.15. And I need to round off these hard edges. After you've extruded it, go to this full round fillet and the first thing you do is just select the center of where it wants to round over and it should uh, it should solve. Sometimes you have to go tell it what are the other top and bottom faces, but it wants to guess at what you want. So I'm going to right click, repeat and do this other side. It rounds it. Looks great. We'll start a sketch on this next face. Kind of the same thing. We're doing just a center rectangle. It's 11 by six in this example, if you want to follow along on the dimensions and build it, we're going to extrude it again. And the extrude is going to be 20.2. I'm going to add a color. I'll hit A for appearance, just to make following the demo hopefully a tiny bit easier. Drag this onto the component. We do S, search for the fillet again, or just click it from the menu, full round. It remembers. We'll just click that side, right click, repeat fillet, full round. If we want just a side, there we got it. Click OK, looking good. Okay, this part's not too hard, just a few extrudes. You could just sketch this shape if you know the radius. I was wanting to back into it with the fillet to quickly model this. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is create uh, this nice transition from here down to kind of where it necks down. And an easy way to do that is a loft. So what I wanna create is a profile for it to finish down here at the bottom. Okay, so if we finish sketch, so if we grab the offset plane, we can set this down to the lower point, or we can sketch, we're going to need the side profile, and that can be where it finishes. We could do it kind of in either order is fine, but let's do, let's do the rail, create sketch, create this top plane happens to be right in the middle. That's great. Now, sometimes it can be tricky to wake up your existing edges. Um, because it's part of a rounded face, um, it can just be hard to wake up certain edges when you're sketching. So I've got this line and I want to grab this corner. It doesn't wake up. And when that doesn't happen and you need it, use project. Project will let you grab these solid edges. You can select that. If this is a rounded face that we need, you can use this body option and that will try or attempt to grab the edges of that rounded body where they would meet your plane. So it, it resketched this line right here, which is really cool. And then we have this little purple line, we have the dot. So that just makes life a little bit easier when it comes to trying to snap to something um, or this can just make your life with sketching a little bit easier. So we're doing one side of the rail that's going to kind of hold this in place. I'm just roughing this out. I now want to drop in the values as I measure them on the cable. I know that this is two, the bottom's 2.8 to the very bottom point. 10.2 one thing to be aware of sometimes the hard transitions for a loft like these straight corners it may not allow you to do it if it gives you an error you can come in and introduce a very small uh, radius just for that transition to make it a little bit easier one other dimension i just haven't added it looks like is this width that's 2.5 that should make it all black and fully defined that looks great 
And so we'll finish this sketch. We have the rail, yay. We want to transition down to something down here. So we'll put a plane uh, from uh, the same as this face or parallel, and then it aligns with this point. Right now it's at distance. Uh, sometimes you have to set it to object, and now it'll go down to that point. Click OK. We now have a new plane. I can sketch the shape down here at the bottom. At the bottom, it's pretty simple. It's really just a circle that's basically centered and happens to line up with the same size as the cord here. So I think it's about six millimeters. That's pretty good when I measure it and we finish the sketch. Now, one challenge here, we have a couple options to solve the problem I'm about to bump into. When we loft this, we're gonna get a problem. Maybe you can kind of already guess what it is. It's going to solve just fine. We add a rail and hopefully the rail solves. It's saying it's not smooth. It looks like I did not put the fillet in. Okay, so right click on the sketch, hit edit sketch, drop in a fillet, try again, just something small. There we go, that looks better. Finish the sketch. We're lofting between face and face. We're gonna use this rail and this time hopefully the rail works. The bummer is it's only really lofting with one side, right? So it's not symmetric. And if, if you'd like it to be symmetric, then there's a couple options you can. And if anyone in the community has a cool cheat for this, I'd love to hear that. Um, but you basically have to either sketch this twice or you basically loft half of it and then mirror it over as a solid. Both work great, whatever feels easier to you. In this case, I think I'm fine with just doing a sketch mirror. Go to sketch mirror, make sure you select everything, double click, should grab the whole thing. This is the line we're mirroring across. I sketched a mirror line that happened to be in the midpoint of this design, which is uh, the middle of what we wanna mirror across. Get this new sketch, we finished the sketch, and now, when we're doing a loft, we have both to pick from. Remember, I'm just picking a solid face. I'm going to a sketch here. That does work. Hit the plus sign, do your first loft. This is a little bit tricky for a beginner, uh, you know, for a part that just you probably see everywhere. You've got one on your desk right now, plugged into your phone. But the real challenge now is doing the cord. Okay, so we can try doing the coil and this is awesome uh, we want to get it lined up correctly and then get the right size here so i need to reorient this and the section size should be a lot bigger i think but i need to reorient i just i didn't really i wasn't planning to design this with a perfect circular coil i was wanting to do a long flat section so i need to create my own 3d curve Okay, so we're gonna get into 3D sketching and that's where we'll create a new sketch. Uh, it doesn't matter what plane you really pick. Uh, we're gonna start here and work our way, but I'm gonna select the A plane to work from and I make sure that 3D sketch is enabled. Select the line tool, we'll come up and select this point and we'll follow down this axis Remember uh, with 3D sketching that the angle or the camera view you're in really matters. So if I go to the front view, um, this is where I can kind of lock in certain constraints. I, mean, I want this to be horizontal in regards to this view. And I know that I want the distance, uh, this horizontal distance to be roughly 60. Okay, so we have this line and here's where I wanna get kind of tricky. I wanna do an arc that comes up and over to the right here or I like to use construction geometry right on an axis. So if I know I want it to jog over 15, that's great. And then I want it to go up, let's say 40, okay? And I do want it to be vertical and I want both of them to be construction. You can right click and do normal construction or you can just hit X on the keyboard. This is a reference that I'm using to kind of set up how I want this to hit. Now I'm also going to just add this, uh, sometimes it's helpful to have a full closed sketch section here that you can use to reference. So I can now go to my arcs. If I did a three point arc or a tangent arc, they're going to behave slightly different. And this is really tricky without these extra 
um, sketch entity. So I'm going from here to here, but I want to reorient uh, the sketch angle here. So you've got these sliders. I'm going to try to drag this up to where it basically forces us to align with this blue axis. So it looks like it's probably, you can type in a value. It's probably 70. Okay. And we want to go from here to here. Whoops. We'll do a tangent arc from this corner to this corner. And hopefully it aligns with that angled line. That looks really good. And the tangent arc is behaving pretty nicely. Let's do a three point arc. This is a lot trickier. And this is why I drew this angled um, guide here. When I select the two endpoints, when I'm dragging this, you'll notice the angle, not only the size, but the, look how it's like the angle is moving across the model, if you can see that. And that's pretty tricky. So selecting the two endpoints and then making sure that this angle is aligned with the angled line that I care about. That helps me lock it in and then I can sort of drag the shape. This takes some practice and getting used to, but um, I definitely have found that if you can align one of the axes to what you care about, that'll let you stay in the 3D sketch. So I'm just doing a tangent arc for this one. That looks nice. And one quick check. When you double click, it should select both, meaning there's a nice smooth transition. That's one gotcha for me. I spent some time messing with this was when I sketched it, I didn't have everything um, in one sketch. So when I double click, it didn't highlight everything. And so when the sweep tried to go, it didn't work. So you need to make sure that it's one nice smooth sketch that will solve for our sweep. I'm going to come to this line. I'll look at it straight on with this uh, front or back view horizontal. That looks good. And so now I want to drop an arc straight down. So I'm going to go to uh, looking at this straight on. You can sketch again, reference geometry coming across. That can be helpful. If I want this to line up, it looks like I should match it to what we did earlier, which was 15. And now we can make these coincident. The point to point can be coincident. Okay, now let's do this arc. I've sketched a reference geometry, the sketch line that I want to line it up with to where it'll come straight into that point. That'll make uh, placing it a little bit easier with I know the two endpoints that I'm trying to hit. So I select both and I get the arc. Looks like, let's make sure we look straight on. It's dropping straight down. That This is at an angle. This comes straight down along the Z axis. Now here's your challenge. Do you have uniformity or is there a pattern in what you've designed? So in this case, if it's basically the same thing, just being repeated, that's where a pattern can be really helpful and could save us some time or I could continue to 3D sketch and create this as expected. So let's go ahead and try, since I do have sort of a pattern here that I want to follow, I'll finish the sketch. Hey, one huge pro tip, when you're sketching in 3D, make sure that it's on. One thing I was trying to do is I was trying to add an additional sketch entity. And for some reason, it didn't recognize that it was all part of one sketch. And the reason was I had checked this off accidentally because I was working on something else. And when I came back, it was not behaving as one sweep. So just make sure that your 3D sketch is always on if you're trying to work in the 3D sketch and everything uh, is supposed to solve together. So if we come to this solid sweep command and we choose this circle and we choose this path that looks good all right let's do our sweep i'm just going to select this solid even though i may not have a sketch circle there uh, handy i can do the solid face and one thing to be aware of i do not want it to merge into one solid body i want it to be separate for patterning purposes so if i do new body this is now a second or this these are now two different bodies, which makes patterning a lot easier. So I'm gonna do pattern, rectangular pattern. I'm gonna select this body and I'm gonna choose an axis. So I'm gonna come over and look at my reference. That looks great to me. I wanna bring it over and maybe I wanna have two or three of these. So I have three in the instance box. The number always includes the original. So if you want four, 
total, then you'd put in four, but just remember that the number count does include the original seed. So I'm gonna try to just line it up really close and then figure it out numerically. Okay, so when I drag this, it, I'm guessing it was 30. I should probably go measure it, right? But 30 looks pretty good. If we click OK, that looks pretty good. When I do this pattern, I notice there's this little gap because of the way this sweep is finishing. It's not creating this nice smooth transition. And there's a number of different ways we can clean this up. Okay, so we're using the press pull to bring this down. It'll keep, keep that curvature coming through. We can go just right where it meets. Click OK, and then now sketching a flat circle and cutting this back. Just going to cut it back to where it's flat a little bit. See once it flattens it. Great. And now I'm going to shorten this one, keep it really close. Good. Pretty small transition, looking pretty good. We're just roughing it out here. Now we try the loft. We do have the solutions for this transition. We can try tangent on one side. Go to the zebra analysis. Not perfect, but the transition looks okay. And then I can do it to the others. Let me change the color real quick, make it a little bit easier to see. And I just want to trim this back a little bit so I can make a nice smooth transition. Can do a circle, could do just anything that'll cut this back. We can make this flat. There we go, looks fine. I'm gonna extend it past. Now we'll just use a move copy and grab this original body. Make sure that you hit the create copy. Um, I don't need to get this perfect. I'm gonna use something else to get it lined up. Click okay when it's just kind of close. I like getting it, you know, rotated. Save myself a little time if I know that. And now we we'll use a line. And so the object, we're using bodies. We wanna use uh, the from, will be this one too. We want it to move over to that center and it does good hey so lots to learn from practicing with this one doing 3d sketching sweeps lofts i hope this helps i'll see you guys in the next video